Are you able to tell me the last time you experienced a moment of grace? Maybe you were able to find that elusive parking spot in the first street lot on a particularly busy morning. Perhaps you got a phone call from a friend you haven't heard from in a while. Maybe your doctor told you it's treatable. Or say you and a friend rented a movie that made you laugh more than you have in a long time. It could be as simple as this, walking into some rather unassuming bakery on 7th and E in Washington, D.C., just as I did last week, only to find butter kuchen in the display case. Now, I didn't know what that was, but it was written in German and had butter right there in the name. So I thought, what the heck? And all I did was take one bite into this veritable brick of bread, and I tasted home. That particular combination of butter, flour, sugar, and yeast was just like they made it at the small town bakery where I grew up. And it's what my family and I seemed to eat just about every Sunday morning for breakfast. I didn't taste it anything like it in 20 years. Out of nowhere, without any warning, I was transported from Washington, D.C. to Jasper, Indiana, and it flooded my soul with memories. They say it's the hippocampus that does that, but I think that's grace, too. In our gospel reading this week, we hear John's rather discouraging attempt at writing a Christmas pageant. Seriously, there are no sheep, no shepherds, angels, cows, stars, or wise people. If you read it again, John's Christmas pageant is literally just two adult men standing out in the dusty wilderness of Judea, one who is described as the word with a capital W, the light no darkness can overcome, and another whose sole job it is to say that over and over in public. Instead of saying the word became flesh and dwells among us, a pastor by the name of Eugene Peterson likes to say that God has moved into the neighborhood. And trust me, I love that. But given John's no frills pageant set in a Judean desert, I'd like to think that an even better rendering is God brought grace to the wilderness. Now, I'm not calling Pittsfield a wilderness. Neither is Washington, D.C. or Hilton Head, South Carolina. I hear it's quite nice there. But wherever we happen to be, it's nevertheless possible to live a rather graceless life in which we bounce from situation to situation, problem to problem, crisis to crisis. That is, it's perfectly possible to live a rather graceless life, period, in which we're just unhappy all the time, unable to find joy in anything as we work to be smarter, faster, richer, more influential, and, irony alert, happier. But God brought grace to the wilderness. God brought grace to the neighborhood. And God has done that through Jesus Christ, who is neither tentative nor temporary. And as witnesses to such grace, we bear some responsibility for keeping our senses peeled to receive God's love for us in unexpected places, whether in parking lots or post offices, with best friends or at the in-laws, through seeing, hearing, moving, laughing, or even tasting something that transports you across space and time to memories of your childhood. Now, do I believe Jesus personally led me to 7th and E in Washington, D.C. for butter cooking? No. Do I believe that the unexpected joy of finding a butter-infused slab of Indiana in a D.C. bakery is pure grace, evidence of God's love set loose in the world? Absolutely. If incarnation is a thing, that is, if we exist for the indwelling of God in our life and breath and being, then we also exist for grace. Food for the journey, as it were, not merely for stoking the hippocampus, but for strengthening our senses and even our faith as we work with God to testify to the light of Christ in this neighborhood and wherever else the journey takes us. Because what you know and I know and God knows, but what not enough other people know, if only because they haven't heard it yet, is that the light which enlightens everyone, the light no darkness can overcome, the word with a capital W has actually become flesh and is living among us and through us. Grace literally abounds. And it is that grace that makes Christ known. So even though you might be tired of hearing it, 
for the last time this season, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. And all God's people said, Amen.